And General, thank you. I appreciated our conversation yesterday and uh, a little bit of a, of a precursor talking about some of, the, <clears throat> some of the initiatives that the agency has up in Alaska that are providing not only for that, uh, that robust defense um, from places like North Korea, Iran, but also making sure that, that we've got everybody covered. And I think that uh, whether you're in Alaska or you're Maine or parts in between, we want to make sure that we're covered here. I had an opportunity uh, over this, this uh, past uh, work uh, recess uh, to be out in, uh, in Kwajalein and see our assets uh, that we have placed there. Uh, that are on the other end. We've got Alaska up to the north and, and then uh, down in the middle of just an awful lot of water out there, the, the, the uh, facilities there at Kwajalein that, um, that allow us to do the level of testing that we need to do for, for our uh, missile defense. Um, it, was, it was very, very important to see and uh, to be able to kind of put all those pieces together. But I appreciate the, uh, the administration and their focus on, on what we are doing within the FY19 MILCON as it relates to, to Fort Greeley and the expansion there um, with the missile fields and <clears throat> making sure that we not only have robust uh, assets there that are in the ground, but making sure that we're able to, uh, to ensure that uh, we're able to um, maintain uh, additional um, uh, silos, that we're able to, to keep the required 44 operational, and so the effort to increase uh, GBI availability through, um, uh, through additional um, uh, assets I think is important, and, and we're certainly supportive of that, as we are with all the efforts that are underway with the uh, long-range discrimination radar out there in, in clear uh, with its ability to, to really be the, uh, the, the eyes, the sensors, in, in terms of understanding uh, what may or, or may not be coming at us from the threat. I think we are keenly aware in Alaska with our geography um, that uh, with regards to, to recent events in, in North Korea, the rising tension with, with Russia, to make sure that we are, are amply prepared uh, is a, a national security priority and uh, the focus that has been placed uh, in ensuring that we um, place this priority is is significant and, uh, again, appreciated. So I guess, General, I'd ask you this morning to just share um, briefly a synopsis of the capabilities that you believe that, uh, that the long-range discrimination radar site in Alaska, uh, along with, with what we have in place at Greeley and what we are, are building out, what it provides to the defense of the nation, because I think for, for colleagues such as, as Senator Collins, who wants to make sure that, that, uh, that there is a level of, of protection, uh, I think it's important that we understand that we have expanded, um, and I think appropriately expanded, our, our defense in these areas. So if you could just quickly address that, I'd appreciate it. Senator McCoskey, thanks, thanks for the question. And uh, let me frame the response in terms of the priorities we got within the agency. The top priority being to um, increase the reliability of the systems we've got the, we have deployed today to include the GMD system as an example, ground-based ground, ground mid-course defense. So increasing reliability, um, building confidence in the warfighter that those systems will work. The, the second priority is increasing our capacity and capability. So the additional 20 GBIs going into the ground in Missile Field 4 at Fort Greeley that in, expands the arrows in the quiver, as we call it, uh, as well as they will be tipped with the reliable uh, kill vehicle, the RKV, um, to increase our capability. Um, as far as um, um, uh, the radar at clear, that will be a tremendously important asset for us because what it does, it provides, it will provide um, what we call mid-course discrimination 
as well as tracking. And the goal is to make the job as easy as we can make it on the kill vehicle. So it has less chaff and countermeasures to try to discern on its own. And the more we can do that during the flight of the threatened missiles towards the target, the easier it is and the higher confidence we'll have in inter intercepting the, um, the uh, threat vehicle. So the LRDR will be looking far out to um, uh, execute both of those, those very important missions, the tracking mission and most important, the discrimination mission. Plus, we hope that um, we're not doing that mission too often, but it'll be there when ready. But when it's not executing the ballistic missile defense mission, it is a magnificent, will be a magnificent asset to do space situational awareness for the United States Air Force as part of their mission. So it will have dual uh, mission capabilities, primary mission being ballistic missile defense um, and ciliary mission to support SSA for the Air Force. Very important. I, uh, I think we recognize that the Missile Defense Agency has been, um, has been tasked with not only uh, an extraordinarily important um, uh, mission of, of defense of the nation, uh, we are asking you to do things quickly, uh, moving uh, in, a, in, a, in a direction that anticipates uh, what the next threat will be. And in doing so, we've entrusted you with a, uh, a fair amount of, of taxpayer dollars to do uh, what you feel is, is important to uh, the authorities within your agency. With regards to the priorities of the organizational structure and your ability to, to effectively meet the mission with the dollars that you have been given, uh, are you comfortable with your ability to, to carry out uh, these responsibilities um, to, to utilize the, the, the significant influx of, of, of funding that, that you're seeing to help you do this, uh, operationally, are you satisfied with where you are? Do you so foresee any changes? Uh, thank you, Senator. Uh, the answer is um, based on the organizational construct um, laid out in DOD Directive 5134.09. That's where it lays out my responsibilities, my authorities, and my accountability, as well as the remainder of the, part of the department. I will say that the Missile Defense Agency is built to do exactly what you're concerned about and the questions you're asking. It's built for speed. It's built for, for rapid decision making in, in, in positions of authority that have the requisite experience to make those decisions. So my concern today is the interface with the remainder of the department to ensure they can operate at the speed that we can operate to deliver the capability that this nation needs in the time frame that it needs it. Um, I will tell you, I am very encouraged with um, both Ms. Lord as the NS and, um, and Dr. Mike Griffin as the new r and &E in what they have stated as far as their priorities to ensure that, um, and the Deputy Secretary of Defense actually, looking at where the bureaucracy is in the department to weed it out and, and streamline it so that we can make these decisions and make it by make the decisions with people who know what the heck they're doing. Not everyone gets a vote, but the bureaucracy from my 35 plus years of experience within the department, there, there are a number of entities within the department that think that they get a vote every time we need to make a decision. But I'm very encouraged with the authorities I've got today the responsibility I've got today, the accountability that I've got that I'm responsible for today with the leadership that exists, that we're going to drive that out. And that will be the key, I believe, to ensuring that um, we follow the processes we've got in place. We've got some very robust, pro robust processes. Uh, I, I, I mentioned yesterday the fact that the $2 billion that was in the, um, the uh, budget amendment we are tracking that. I am tracking the obligation execution of those dollars as a minimum on a weekly basis, if not a daily basis, to ensure that we remain credible with you all uh, on the funding that you've provided, that we are actually providing capability with that funding. So we've got the processes in place. We just need to execute it. And we need to move the chaff out of the way and trust the folks who've been placed in positions of authority to make the decisions and move out. Hope that answers the question. It, it does, and I thank you for that, and uh, know that we all 
look forward to working with you to accomplish this mission. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you.